Shortly after arriving at Jabba's palace, C-3PO and R2-D2 are taken to what appears to be a torture chamber for droids. This brings up a lot of interesting questions, such as, do droids feel pain? And it's also a little bit of an unlikely subject for a children's playset. Nevertheless, Kenner did make such a playset in 1983, although everything may not be entirely as it seems. The Jabba the Hutt Dungeon Action Playset was released in 1983, and then again in 1984 in a slightly altered form. Both of these playsets were exclusive to Sears department stores. We're going to be looking at both versions of the playset today, but first let's look at the 1983 version with its stylish orange box. This original version of the playset came with three action figures, Klaatu, 8D8, and Nikto. Personally, I'm a big fan of this vintage box style with the gradient and the silver border, but as you can see on the back of the box, it's basically exactly the same thing. Not a lot to see there. If we look on the side, though, we can see a little bit about the features. It says, the Job of the Hut dungeon comes with three Star Wars action figures. Crane Arm can transport R2-D2, R2-D2 figure not included, and use the branding iron on any droids in Jabba's dungeon. Now you may notice that this looks a little weird, that's because they've actually pasted something on top of what was on the box originally. If you were to peel that off, you would see it reads, The branding iron will torture any droids in Jabba's dungeon. So I guess they thought using the word torture was a little bit too hardcore for a kid's toy, and I'm inclined to agree with them, although, I mean, that is kind of the entire premise behind the toy. If we open up the box, we can see what it comes with, or at least what I have left from that. This is a large platform, a crane, and two attachments for that crane. This is what you would have gotten if you had opened the box. Originally, though, this comes with three figures in baggies, uh, an instruction sheet, some sticker sheets that you had to apply yourself, as well as all the other stuff that I just showed you. At its heart, the playset is really quite simple. You've just got this main platform here that's a hollow piece of plastic. You've got a crane that does move up and down and turns around if you actually attach it to the platform. And you've got two attachments that go on the crane itself. This, of course, is that infamous branding iron that they were using on the gonk droid. And then it's got a crane uh, hook as well. So you're meant to just sort of slide this hook on there and then put the branding iron on the very end. The hook can be moved all along the length of the crane like this but the actual branding iron is stuck in place on the end, and you just sort of snap it into place, and that allows it to spin in 360 degrees. Now, if you look at the details of the set, especially the stickers here, which are kind of just vaguely technological looking, I guess, and the other stickers here on the side and on the back, just a lot of pipes and duct work, and even got a reel-to-reel -reel tape player, apparently, on one side for some reason. And also, if you look at the sculpted detail as well, there's a lot of pipes and ductwork and things, but nothing that really screams Jabba's Palace to me. And the general design of the toy with these steps and the large ramp here on the left doesn't really bring to mind the scene from the torture chamber in Jabba's Palace. And there's actually a pretty good reason for that. You see, this toy started out its life as something very different. I need another leg. It's Kenner's new Star Wars Droid Factory that you put together to make your own droids. Jawa action figures sold separately. Hey, I made R2-D2. You can make your own droids or follow the droid maker blueprints. By switching different tops, arms, and legs, you can make hundreds of droids, up to five at a time. The movable crane swings parts where you need them. You can even make droids with wheels. Gotcha. The Star Wars Droid Factory. Jawa action figures sold separately. New from Kenner. So yeah, this was originally the Droid Factory playset from 1979. Essentially what Kenner did was to cast it in a different color of plastic and then re-sculpt some of the details and things on it and added those colorful stickers. But you can still tell what it was originally, I think. Of course, the point of all this was to save money so that they could have an exclusive thing for Sears to release during the holidays. But of course, we can't forget that it also included three action figures from Return of the Jedi. 8D8, the torture droid, seems like the most obvious addition, but Klaatu and Nikto are both skiff guards, and they don't really have anything to do with the dungeon as we saw it in the film. I kind of get the impression that Kenner 
was probably wanting to get rid of some of the uh, lower selling figures, shall we say, in the Return of the Jedi line, but I could be imagining that. The best one, I think, is, of course, 8D8, and he's also the most appropriate. Uh, he's got some really funky-looking legs. I will say that about him. Still, it is nice that you get three figures with the set, and it kind of helps to make up for the otherwise lackluster play features of the set. Speaking of the play features, you're supposed to be able to use the hook on the crane to carry R2-D2 around, but my R2-D2 here has a marble stuck in his bottom for some reason. So we're going to use the gonk droid instead, and actually that's the more appropriate choice given the scene in the film. He's got a nice little lip inside of his uh, casing here that allows you to place the hook there and just sort of move him around like that. It actually works pretty well, even though I doubt it was designed with that in mind. You can also have the other figures hold him up so that you can torture him. Lots of fun for the whole family. As I mentioned, they made another version of this set, which you can see right here. It's essentially the same thing, except it comes with different figures and a different box with a nice green gradient this time. It comes with EV-99, a man -a man and Barada figures. And if you look on the side, it's more or less the same as on the previous one, except if you look at the final one here, it says, you can pretend all droids are in for a hot time with the branding iron accessory. So they've made it even less threatening than the previous edited version was. So if we open up this box, you can see that the main difference between the two sets, aside from the box itself, is the platform here. It's actually cast in a different color, as is the crane. It's more of a, a tan color. But aside from that, it is exactly the same as the other playset. The same, that is, except for the figures that it includes. And that is actually a pretty big difference, especially if you're trying to find one of these nowadays. This version of the playset comes with three figures that are actually pretty sought after and expensive these days. The first of these is EV-99, who is the droid in charge of the dungeon. Then we have Barada, who was another skiff guard. And of course, we have a Mana Man, who is an alien bounty hunter who really doesn't have any business being in this playset, if I'm honest. But he's an awesome figure, so I can't really complain. If we take a closer look at these figures, you can see that EV-99 is definitely one of the cooler droid designs, I think, and it's the only Star Wars figure that I can think of that has an articulated mouth. If you look there, there's a lever on the back of her head that causes the mouth to open and close, and of course the head also moves from side to side as well. And yes, I did say she. This is one of the few canonically female droids in Star Wars that I can think of. Don't have a huge amount to say about Barada, except that he is one of the harder to find skiff guard figures, certainly. And of course, we have a man -a man with his grotesque skull staff and bizarre alien body. Definitely one of my favorite figures. Just not entirely sure why he's in this set, but the fact that he was included does. Uh, make this set go up in value by quite a bit. Since the figures included with the original orange version are not as desirable as the ones with the green version, it's definitely less valuable, although both of these are getting up there in price nowadays. I've seen the box for the green version go for $150 by itself, and the uh, green version, when complete, could easily sell for over $1,000. Personally, I'm glad I picked these up when I did, because I would have a real hard time justifying paying that much for either of these playsets, if I'm honest. But they are kind of cool additions to my collection. I really do like the way the boxes look. The actual platforms themselves take up a lot of room, so I don't have them displayed. I just have them stuck in their boxes, but I do like having the boxes themselves on display. As usual, this video was brought to you with help from my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs and especially Angelica Brady. Thank you very much for your support. Check out the link in the video description if you'd like to know more about how you can support me on Patreon and get perks like behind-the-scenes posts, early videos, and more. Thanks for watching!